This show contains spoilers and adult language. Listener discretion is advised. Movies with Ron, movies with Ron. Hell yeah, motherfucker. Movies with Ron. Hey, so I went to the doctor. I got health insurance now. Wow, really? Yeah. This is, we're in America, so that's a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> got my yearly physical. Apparently, wow. apparently you're supposed to do it every year. It's been about 20 years for me. Well, better late than never. <laughs> 20 years since I've had a man in his 40s touch my testicles. Oh, that must have been weird for you. I know, right? They're usually much older. <laughs> Welcome to episode 106 of Movies with Ron, the podcast where my older brother recaps a movie he saw from beginning to end for me and you because we like his versions better. It's okay if you've seen the movie. It's okay if you haven't seen it. The experience is unique. So let's get it on. I'm Chris, your MC for the time being. And here he is, folks. He's the ball cracker, death on foot. You know him, you love him. He's Ron. 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 Hey, Ron. Hey, buddy. What the hell's going on here? I know, right? Just you and me. Going it alone. Like a couple of lone wolves. <laughs> They're dropping like flies, dude. I know. Losers. What, what happened? What did Candy say yesterday? She said, no problem. I'll be there. And today she texts me, I'm tired. I don't feel very good. I'm sorry. It must be because of the break we've been planning. Yeah. That's right, folks. We've been planning on taking a little break here from Movies with Ron. We've been going for, what, two years? Mm Mm-hmm. Every week? That's commitment, if you ask me. I think it's pretty impressive myself. So we're going to take a few weeks off. Yeah, man. And Candy thought it started this week. Candy was always one of those kids that just quit school a month before (laughs) the year ended. (laughs) She was like, it's ending anyway. (laughs) She wanted to talk about Hereditary, too. Yeah. Good job last week, by the way. Hey, thanks, buddy. I actually went to see it again with Heather. Yeah. And she was like, eh. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, you know, I just really want to show this to you. It's like, kind of a masterpiece. (laughs) And yeah, it was not her cup of tea. I saw it as well. Yeah? Yeah. I took a date. She loved it. You, not so much? I love the parts I was awake for. And I'm sorry. You are an ass. It's only because you did such a good fucking job last week. Oh, okay. It is a great movie. Anyways, they killed the dog at the end. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah, he's walking up to the treehouse, and then, like, it's just a random shot of the dead dog. Yeah. Yeah. That seals the fate. I hate this movie. Oh, come (laughs) on. No, no, I don't hate it. Uh, But... I did look it up on doesthedogdie.com, yeah. and it was like, it indeed does die. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just dogs, though. It, it has all the phobias. Okay. Doesthedogdie.com. If you don't like spiders, uh-huh. it, 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 there's spiders in this movie. Watch out. Are there injuries to eyes? Yeah. Yeah. And it, other people are like, because you, you can post questions like, do anybody's toes get cut off? Some people are sensitive about toes <laughs> speaking of toes the beast master the beast master from 1982 i told you this was coming oh yeah you look at the uh the picture on imdb that's the best poster for a movie i've ever seen I probably know, right written and directed by don coscarelli the man yeah he did the phantasm movies also bubba hotep john dies at the end but he made the first Phantasm, and this was his Key to the City movie. Yeah. That I like to describe. And it's based on a novel by Andre Norton. A lady. Yes. A lady named Andre. We didn't like the woman writing the sci fi and the fantasy back then. We're talking like 40s and 50s. Oh, here. yeah, man. And her novel was like about a Navajo 
warrior who like travels to Venus and shit. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's written over a hundred and thirty books. Wow. Yeah. And uh, Don Coscarelli said, as a child, he read them all. He's lying. <laughs> But uh, when when given the choice of making any movie he wanted, uh, he he had he had no choice. He had to make an Andre Norton adapted film, starring Mark Singer. Yeah, baby. Let's see what else was he in? Um, the Beastmaster Two, <laughs> Through the Portals of Time. This movie got heavily criticized when it when it came out. People called it a a Conan ripoff, mm-hmm. but it only came out like a couple of months after Conan. So it's just one of those coincidences and shit. But I'll tell you what, man. There was just something about this movie. People loved it. People loved watching it. Mm -hmm. It was when it came out on video. I mean, I don't. VHS wasn't prevalent yet, but it came out on uh, TBS and HBO. That's right. And and they they were they played it so heavily on both stations. You know what they called the channels? TBS was the Beastmaster station. Yeah. And uh, HBO was, hey, Beastmaster's on. Fuck yeah. Damn right. But the Beastmaster, Mark Singer, he's in a movie called Lancelot, Guardian of Time. <laughs> and I feel like this is a future movie we're going to do. John Saxon is in it. You remember him? No. Maybe, but not the name. He's in a lot of old westerns. Classic actor. We know him as the sheriff father from Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, yeah. He, he plays a character called Wovencroft. Ooh. <laughs> Wovencroft. <laughs> uh, Mark Singer is also the cousin of Brian Singer. And I'm sure nowadays he's not proud of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, he also has a black belt in Kung Fu. I knew so, it. So, yeah, you, the, he was born for it, man. Yeah, you don't fuck with the Beastmaster. <laughs> Uh, also starring Tanya Roberts. She was one of the Charlie's Angels. There you go. And uh, she got this role in Beastmaster, even though Demi Moore was really trying hard for the role. Right. And Don Coscarelli wanted Demi Moore, but he was forced to pick Tanya Roberts. Yeah, it's probably some sort of a favor. Uh. Yeah. Tanya Roberts, the former Charlie's Angel. And then, like, 20 years later, Demi Moore takes a role where she's trying to kill Charlie's Angels in the remake. That's right. <laughs> also, Rip Torn. Oh, yeah, Rip Torn. Who everybody loves. Oh, man, I love him. Regardless of what he does in his personal life. Why? Does he do stuff? In 2010, he was arrested in Salisbury, Connecticut. <laughs> After police found him passed out, holding a loaded gun on the floor of a bank that had just been broken into. Wow! <laughs> Torn was drunk and thought the bank was his home. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of money in here. <laughs> like there should be. <laughs> Give me a highball. Did you ever watch the Larry Sanders show? Yes. <laughs> His drink of choice was a salty dog. <laughs> Larry Sanders is like, I'm having a party tonight. He's like, oh, what should I bring? I don't know. I'll bring salt. <laughs> now I want a salty dog. Have you heard about his beef with Dennis Hopper, too? No. All right. I can imagine it's a wonderful beef, though. <laughs> there was that movie that Dennis Hopper made where it was Peter Fonda and Jack Nicholson. Highway man, <sighs> are you are you referring to Easy Rider? <laughs> there you go, <laughs> Jesus Chris. I denounce you. Uh, all right, all right. Fuck Easy Rider because of this story. Okay, I'm willing to hear you out. Dennis Hopper was going to hire Rip Torn to play Jack Nicholson's part. Uh-huh. They all met for dinner. The producer Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, and Rip Torn, and uh, they got in a big argument. And Dennis Hopper pulled a knife on somebody. What the hell? Rip Torn got the knife from him and kicked his ass. Wow. Yeah, Rip Torn was the hero and then never got hired for the movie. Well. And he said that was his point where he chose like his principles over success. Yeah. And he's kind of been like struggling. He's never been like a number one. Right. 
and uh I don't care, man. He he makes it work wherever he goes. Oh, totally. But in the nineties, Dennis Hopper was on the Tonight Show with Jay Leno uh-huh. and told a story about Rip Torn pulling a knife at a dinner. Are you they were kidding? Having. Oh yes. Dennis Hopper is a bag of shit. <laughs> Before you told me this story, <laughs> I was sitting there weighing, hmm, Dennis Hopper or Rip Torn? Who do I like more? <laughs> and you know I love Dennis Hopper, but yeah. I, I was already going to pick Rip. <laughs> Good old Rip. <laughs> Rip Torn sued him for defamation. <laughs> and uh, in the trial, all the original dinner guests testified. Yeah? Yeah, and they all had Rip Torn's back. See, there you go. Yeah. Dennis Hopper had to pay him like almost a million dollars. Good. Yeah. Should have been more. Yeah. Let's lunch money for them. <laughs> but Rip made it out. Got the role of a lifetime in Beastmaster. Hell yeah. When he was talking to Don Coscarelli, he was like, uh, I'm playing the bad guy, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah. I want to play this role like a turkey vulture. <laughs> and Don was like, yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> And when Rip showed up on set, he was wearing a prosthetic nose that was like uncalled for in the script and everything. <laughs> like Rip, like he took this shit seriously. Wow. Yeah, man. You know, Rip Torn has a pre-performance dinner. Really? He has before he uh, films. He eats a plate of raw oysters. Wow. Every time. That's such a Rip Torn thing. <laughs> and uh, he does it, and I quote, for energy. <laughs> Every day I drink a glass of my own urine because it's sterile and I like the taste. <laughs> All right, folks. Grab some oysters and a cup of piss because you're going to need it. It's the Beastmaster on Movies with Ron. It's showtime. So we open up with just some still shots of uh, the Beastmaster's animal friends. All right. You know, like his eagle and his ferrets and his black tiger. Und then, the Beastmaster. Let me just see these three guys walking through the gates of this, uh, this city, a rook. Let me tell you a joke. Three guys walk into a pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that's what happens this is immediately when i thought of <laughs> three guys walk into a pyramid <laughs> they go into this pyramid which is pretty damn cool man for like a movie set come on they they built this sucker it's one of those like step pyramids yeah now deep in the bowels of the pyramid are uh we already see these three witches okay and they're gathered around a cauldron Okay, we don't see their faces yet. We just see other bodies. And they're like, slinking around all sexy. And they are young and uh, fit. <laughs> and you watching it, you're like, you turn around. Is anybody else watching me watch this? <laughs> Make you a little nervous, right? Showing a bunch of skin. You know, this is a barbarian movie. Yeah. That's my pleasure. And that's what witches do around a cauldron, man. They prophesy. Mm-hmm. And they're called the Witches of R. R is the the god of this story. Yeah. How do you spell that? A R. Ah. And in the cauldron they can like see, you know? Yeah. Psychically, I guess, you know. And they are watching the king and queen sleep. Mm. King Zed and his wife. King Zed in this movie is actually played by the guy who played Sigmund Freud in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. <laughs> Yeah, with the corn dog. And then the three guys walk into the room. It's Rip Torn. He's young. He's got a weird looking nose. <laughs> and then the two guys with him are his priests. And all of Rip Torn's priests wear red cloaks. Mm. So he kept the nose? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And the witches are like, Mayax. That's his name <laughs> in this movie, Mayax. <laughs> Spelled M A A X. <laughs> Just like. My name is Max. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the high priest of the city of Aruk. 
He's the liaison between the people and the god R. Mm. And the witches are like, ah, oh, Mayax, we see the truth. The truth is hungry, baby. And then we see these witches' faces, and they are horribly ugly. Mm. Like, they look like they have melted pig faces. Damn. And they got these hot bodies. It's yeah. very ahead of its time. <laughs> We see the prophecy about you, Mayax. You ain't gonna like it. I must know what it is. You're gonna die, man. <laughs> and you're gonna be killed by the unborn child of King Zed. Then the child will die. The child must die tonight. And then all of a sudden, all rise for his royal pimpness, King Zed. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Zed walks in with his guards, and he's like, Yo, blood, I hear you be killing babies and shit. And Mayax just looks at him like, Uh, <laughs> R demands life of an unborn child. Yeah, well, you ain't killing no innocent kids in my town. So uh, you banished. You go off to the hills, and you uh, you do that shit with, with the, the barbarian Juns, okay? You... You, you get on out of here. <laughs> the unborn child is yours, Zed. And he's like smiling at him like, oh, yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> I just decided the, the sacrifice has to be your baby. <laughs> His guards are like, shing, they pull the swords. Well, now, hang on, hang on. The child must be cut out and branded with the symbol of R <laughs> and then chopped up and sprinkled on a salad. King Zed's like, oh, you, man, you motherfucker. You know, I could have you killed with your bitch ass. And then Mayax just like looks at his two priests and then they immediately kill themselves. They just throw these hooks into the ceiling and then jump off of the step and hang themselves. And they, they choke and die right there. And Mayax just like looks back at King Zed like, yeah, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> Zed's like, fanatics. <laughs> Okay, you banish, get the fuck out. So then the guards escort Mayax and all of his pig bitches out, <laughs> out of the pyramid. <laughs> As they're leaving, okay, outside, right outside the pyramid, there's like an old woman in a cloak standing there with a big cow. And Mayax like looks at her like, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, I'm leaving. So you, you do your thing. <laughs> So then later that night, that lady actually sneaks in. She sneaks a cow into the king and queen's bedroom. Mm. She's good. <laughs> okay. And uh, we see, oh, it was one of the pig bitches. All right. Yeah. The king and queen are sleeping. She opens up this little bottle and pours this glowing blue liquid onto their chests. She gives them pearl necklaces. Oh. But it's a magic pearl necklace. Like, they can't move. They can't get up. It's like laying there with Thor's hammer on your chest. Yeah. You know? So they're awake. They know what's happening, but they can't do anything about it. So the queen, she's crying and shit. The king's like, bitch, get out. <laughs> but the pig bitch, like, is waving her hands around over the, the pregnant belly of the queen. And uh, she's, like, saying some magic words. And no shit, dude, she transfers that baby from the queen's belly into the cow's belly. Oh, God. Yeah, dude, like, queen's belly shrinks, cow's belly bulges out. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, now we're taking your baby. You like that? Your unborn child is ours now. So then she leaves, okay? Just leaves them with that necklace crap on them, the, the goop. Mm. Then it just cuts to night off in the wilderness, and the witch is in front of this big, giant bonfire she's got, but the flame is blue. It's actually pretty cool. She pulls out a knife and cuts that baby right out of the cow. <laughs> and she's like holding the baby up. Right then, there's some dude just like walking through the wilderness and sees a blue fire. And it's not this particular actor, but... I can't think of anybody but Reggie from Phantasm when I see this guy. <laughs> She's like, hey, Reg. And he sees this blue fire. He goes and checks it out. Oh, holy shit, there's a witch. She's about to kill a baby. Yeah. Uh, what would Reg do? 
it would get involved. <laughs> she takes this baby and then brands it on the palm of its hand with like the mark of R. Okay. Mm. Looks like a weird little triangle. Yeah. Baby's crying, okay? And then she lifts the knife like really high like she's going to stab it. Right then, Reg pulls out his weapon of choice, okay? <laughs> Reg has a glaive. <laughs> okay. It's a folding weapon that you throw. That's the definition of a glaive, all right? Oh, okay. His glaive is called a caber. That's that's what he named it. Nice. This this weapon exists only in the Beastmaster. <laughs> Actually, there's only three movies that have, like, glaives featured in them. <laughs> there's this one. There's Krull, which has the the actual glaive. And then the movie Blade. <laughs> and he's got a couple. And that's it. Yeah. I oh, forgot Ready Player One. Nah, it doesn't count. <laughs> so he pulls out his caber, and uh, he unfolds it. It looks like it doesn't make sense when you see it. <laughs> you don't see how it could work. Yeah. Anyway, he throws it right into that pig bitch's back. And she's like, Wah! And then she stops moving. She just sit slumped over the fire with the baby in her arms. He walks up, pulls the caber out of her back, and then her cloak just collapses like she's not even there anymore. Mm. He walks up and he's like, huh, mm, uh, okay. And then behind him, and he turns and he looks up at this sexy lady body. And he's like, whoa. <laughs> Then he sees the face. He's like, oh, God. And she's like, rah. He raises the caber, and then she blows him. Nice. Yeah, right over the fire. And he kind of gets up and just, all right, that wasn't that bad. I'm going to come get you now. (laughs) He pulls out his sword, and then she, like, uses her psychic power. She she blows his sword out of his hand, and it just flies straight up. And then straight down, right in front of him. Damn. (laughs) So he just picks it up. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and stabs her with it <laughs> and he goes and picks up the baby and he's like <laughs> a baby Look at this. you're a cute little guy and the next day he's walking into his town you know the his village in the hills mm-hmm. he walks through the gates and they have their own symbol which is just the Ghostbusters symbol without the ghost <laughs> All the other good, all the good symbols were taken. <laughs> and everybody's like, hey, Reg, you're back. Dude, did you bring any food? Because uh, we're starving. You know, we live in the wastelands of Southern California. That's where this movie was filmed. <laughs> in the wastelands of Southern California. Oh, shit, he's got a baby. Hey, can we eat it? Do you want to have <laughs> sex, Reg? There's nothing to do out here. He holds up the baby like, yay, the child. Everybody cheers. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Fuck yeah. I'd be holding the baby up. Hell yeah. And then it just cuts to years later. He's training the boy to fight. Cling, clang, cling, clang. And then Reg is like, good. Now, the caber. (laughs) Check this out. I'm going to show you how to use this baby. (laughs) And there's this one guy like off gathering nuts and berries. (laughs) And Reggie's like, hey, tits. (laughs) Man, what? <laughs> and then he just throws the caber, and it grazes Tits's hat and pins it to a tree. You old bastard! Reg and the kid are just laughing their asses off. They just made a fool out of this guy. And then the kid senses something in the bushes, and he gets all serious, and then he gets in front of Reggie. He's like, Father! Father, run! And then, roar, there's a huge roar coming from the bushes, and then Tits just gets... Pulled into the bushes. Oof. And then he gets thrown out dead. And Reg and the kid are like, whoa. And then out lumbers a bear. And it's got like a big old bloody face. <laughs> he just ate something. He ate tits. Reggie and the kids start to run when Reggie trips and he breaks his leg. Hmm. And the kid stands up and he walks towards the bear. And Reg says the kid's name for the first time. Dar! <laughs> right. And the kid's like, hang on, Dad. I got this. I got this. And he just like stares into the bear's eyes. And the bear stares back. They're looking at each other for a little while. And then the bear just, okay, and leaves. Mm. Dar comes back to check on Reggie's leg. You know, his red leg. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine, buddy. But uh, listen, 
don't tell anyone what you can do. You know, talk to animals and shit. They'll, they'll kill you for that. Yeah. You know, the gods, they put their mark on you. And he looks at his, you know, his brand, which he's still got. Someday you'll find out why, but until then, this mark, it will be your guide. And till then, you're my beloved. And he hugs him. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you know, he's adopted, but he loves that boy. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, uh, run ahead, go back to the village, tell everybody Tits is dead. <laughs> Kid runs off, and then the bear, like, comes back. <laughs> wait, wait, Dar! Dar comes back, he's like, oh, okay. And then he communes with the bear again. And the bear's like, ooh, all right, I get it. <laughs> At the time this was filmed, this was the only working bear in movies. Yeah. And he attacked his handler on the set. <laughs> so Dar runs off, you know, swinging his stick. He's happy. He's a happy boy. And then we just fade into smiling Mark Singer, baby. Fuck yeah. And he's playing with his dog. His dog named Kodo. It's like a white shepherd. Yeah. Dar's got to go out and do some farming. Because, you know, they're hill people. They're a simple folk. Yeah. Reggie is much older now. And he's like, fixing Dar's hoe. <laughs> he's like, hey, Dar, it's fixed. He throws it to him. And then he like fakes like he's going to attack him. And Dar's like, huh! <laughs> And then they laugh. <laughs> Couple of fighters, you know. <laughs> we love each other. So he goes out and he's farming with his hoe. And Kodo followed him out there. Everybody else is working. He's like, fucking off, playing with his dog, you know. <laughs> Picks up a stick and throws it over the hill. And the dog like, row, runs over. And then this dog just starts barking like crazy, okay? Dar's like, huh, uh, go check it out. He walks over the hill and sees a cloud of dust heading for the hill village. Oof. His village is called Emer. What's he wearing? He's wearing a... Shirt made of the, the finest quality of burlap <laughs> and pants as well. Mm. Like Uncle Owen from Star Wars. That's where he's, how he's dressed. Yeah. It's this cloud of dust. He's looking at this and he's like, the Juns. It's a horde of barbarians coming to take his village. So him and the other farmers, they just start hauling ass back there. Meanwhile, in town, Reggie, he's like standing there drinking a cup of pee. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he drinks it again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he hears the rumble. He hears the horde coming. And he like, nah, keeps drinking it. <laughs> nah, all right, I better go see what this is. He goes out. Oh, shit. There's a bunch of barbarians coming. And the Juns, they ride over this hill like real slow, like boom, boom. And the dude in the lead, okay, leading them, he is serious. He's got like this big helmet on and it's got these giant bat wings. It's fucking cool. Damn. He stops. Reggie, standing out at the gates, just uh, he drops the pea cup and goes and picks up his sword. And then he unsheaths it and stands at the gate and like, all right, okay, bitches, who's first? Yeah. He draws a line in the sand and then steps back. <laughs> okay, everybody else from the village, they like came out to, okay, I guess we'll stand here. But Reggie is obviously the town badass. Mm-hmm. And he's old, but he is tough. And he's got this look on his face like he is so serious. He's cool, man. Everybody else is like looking at him like, all right. <laughs> man, I'm glad Reg is here. Like, you guys are about to see some shit. Okay, you're about to see Reg do some serious shit. The horde advances like real slow and then fast they start riding. And we see Reg's face, okay? And his face, it's hard, baby. He's ready. Here we go. And we close up on his eyes, you know, the, the, the eyes. A warrior's eyes. The eyes of a man that families and a son depend on. A man who protects. A man who kills when he must. The horses run right over him and trample him to death. He does not even get to swing his sword. Really? <laughs> yeah, man. Damn. It's ridiculous. Thanks for the build-up. I know. <laughs> so then the barbarians just start killing everybody. There's like topless women running around. Uh, the first tits that you see in this movie, they belong to David Carradine's ex-girlfriend. Nice. So they're all getting slaughtered, right? And then finally Dar and the farmers show up. And uh, Dar, you know, he knows how to fight, so he starts doing this. He's like taking guys down off of horses. He's not like the ultimate hero, but he can hold his own. So this crossbow guy comes riding up, sees Dar. He's like, okay, yeah, now you. 
Dar picks up a shield and catches the arrow in it and then flips it around and catches the rider on that. <laughs> this is actually really cool. At that point, the leader with the bat wings on his helmet, he like backs his horse up to, man, that was cool. <laughs> Dar looks around and he is just watching his people die. He's jumping up and tackling dudes off of horses, you know. He gets a sword off of one of them and then he just starts hauling ass for the leader. The leader just sits up on his horse and is watching Dar run at him and then sees Dar get clubbed in the back of the head by the guy who was behind him the entire time. Oh. So Dar goes down and he is knocked out. And the leader's like, <laughs> all right, keep killing, keep killing. Now, you know what? That'd be great. Keep killing. And then Kodo shows up and drags his master to safety. Nice. Fucking nice, man. This is good. Here comes the dog, strong <laughs> and brave. <laughs> and then burr, he gets shot with an arrow. It's horrible, man. Oh. So the village is burning. They got houses up on stilts for some reason. And they're burning and falling, you know. And then in real slow rides, Mayax and his priests. Oh. So the Juns are working for him now. And, you know, Rip Torn. At this point, he's a, he's a little older. His teeth are a little blacker. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he's still a bastard. I take the children, yeah. <laughs> I want to kill kids. I love it. <laughs> Dar is actually asleep at his feet. So, you know, he's the unborn baby. Yeah. Never even knew it. He was right there next to him the whole time. And then Kodo gets up and keeps dragging Dar away. He's got an arrow in him. Yeah. Okay. So it's like, oh, geez, good boy. Good job, boy. <laughs> Later, like off in the bushes and, you know, away from the town, Dar wakes up. And when he opens his eyes, his vision is like soaring above the land, like he's flying. And he's like, what the hell's going on here? And he like blinks a couple of times. He sees this, like, what is going on? And finally, he blinks it away and he, you know, he sees where he is. He sits up and Kodo is already dead, like next to him. Oh. Yeah, it's really sad. But he's a freaking hero dog, man. So he gets up and he runs back to Emer, and it is just decimated. It's just a smoking pile of rubble. Yeah. As he's walking into the town, there's a black eagle, like, up on top of the gate, like, watching him. And he just sits there and stares into its eyes like he's communing with it. And then, whee! It flies away. Inside, everybody is dead. It's just ashes and smoke and Asses and toes. <laughs> People are skewered on poles, you know. He sees his dad's piss cup. Aww. And then it just cuts to him carrying his dead dog through the, the burning, the burnt town. And when you see this scene, you're like, man, if that's a real dog, this is wonderfully. He is a good, <laughs> good dog actor. Because he's all like dead and floppy. Yeah. It's probably fake. <laughs> and then he goes and lays the dog in Reg's arms. And he like puts Reg's hand around the dog. And you see that he's taken everybody in the town and arranged them on the ground in the symbol of their people. The hill people. Yeah. And he's sitting there looking at him and he can hear Reg in in his in his head, you know. Talking about his, you know, his abilities and the mark on his hand, remember? And then he finds Reg's sword and his caber. My sword and my caber will be your trusted companions. Protect the village, boy. Protect your home. And Dar like looks around. <laughs> and if anything happens to me, look for our enemies, the Juns, and you may search for your destiny. And Dar just takes a torch and lights all of his friends on fire. Aww. The eagle is uh, soaring around and we can see the sign of his people burning from above. Yeah. So he leaves, and he is now in full-blown leather gear. <laughs> Barbarian wear. It's just leather underwear and a leather loincloth. <laughs> uh, and boots. So there's nowhere else to go in the wastelands of Southern California. He starts climbing some desert rocks and mountains and shit, right? Yeah. He's up on the peak of one, and he's, he's holding a log. Motherfucker's holding a log. <laughs> <laughs> he's like swinging it around like he's training. I don't know. It's weird, man. Jeez. Well, if you can swing a log, you can swing a sword. 
If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. (laughs) (laughs) The eagle's flying around watching him. He looks up at the eagle and it's like, yeah, you know what? Let's be buddies. (laughs) And Dar actually calls out to the eagle and it is great (laughs) when he does. He just like looks up and goes, (laughs) I don't know, man. It's like, damn. (laughs) He takes his father's sword and he pulls it from the sheath and it's like, dun, dun. It's a pretty cool looking sword too. Mm-hmm. When they were making this movie, everybody was fighting over who got to keep it at the end, and somebody <laughs> stole it. <laughs> They're still like offering a reward for that shit. Damn. So then he, he picks it up, he swings it around, like, whew, 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 whew. and then he's like flipping it, like really cool. And you know what? Yeah, Dar, you, I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> and then check this out, Chris. Right then, there is a shot of Dar like running down this like real shallow river, creek. Mm hmm. He's like running and swinging his sword. He's like chopping the water with it like a like an excited kid with a new toy. Yeah. This is the same river that like three months later, Vic Morrow and two little kids would die in while they were filming Twilight Zone, the movie. Oh, God. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> then he kneels oh, to catch his breath. It's a long day, a long day of training, okay? <laughs> He's not wearing his loincloth also. He's just wearing his leather undies. <laughs> He was getting too hot. <laughs> Wasn't showing enough skin. <laughs> While he's catching his breath, two ferrets poke out from under his loincloth. And they're like, me, 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 me. Hey, this stinks. <laughs> Let's take it. <laughs> yeah, sour. <laughs> Screw this dude. We'll use it and we'll make soup. So they steal it and they run off with his loincloth. And he's like, hey, you. And he he chases them. He's like running through the forest trying to catch these ferrets who took his fucking dick covering. (laughs) Come back here. Me, 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 me. He's so close. It's just out of reach. And then, whoa, whoa, whoa. He comes out of the bushes and falls off of a cliff right into a mud hole. He falls into this shit, like, up to his chest. It's like, I don't know, mud, dinosaur poop, whatever. So he's like, oh, oh, shit. Okay. (laughs) All right, I might be screwed here. And yes, he is obviously screwed. Mm -hmm. And there is a tree hanging over it, but it is just out of his reach. In the tree are the two ferrets with the (laughs) loincloth. And they're just watching him, like, we're going to watch you die, man. It's cool. (laughs) He looks up, and he's like, well, how about a little help? Come on, you two got me into this. Now get me out. And he's like... <laughs> <laughs> he's sinking, you know. And then the ferrets, they just drop his loincloth into the shit. <laughs> and he looks up and he goes, thanks. <laughs> he's sinking deeper. Okay, he's like up to his neck and shit. <laughs> yeah. And then he just stares at the ferrets. And he communes with them, okay? And the ferret's like, time to go to Wyke. <laughs> One of them runs out onto the branch. The other one just starts chewing on the branch. So it like kind of weakens it. And then the one ferret out on the end of it is enough weight to push it down. Oh, wow. Sadar grabs it and he pulls himself out while the the ferret that climbed out to the edge uh, falls into the shit and starts drowning. (laughs) Dar's like, oh, yeah, that's great. Thanks, guys. We what? what?" And then the one ferret is like, get my fucking friend out of there. <laughs> so he reaches down and, and pulls it out. He pulls this ferret out of this mud. Okay, he's covered in mud. The ferret's covered in mud. The ferret has got to be scared to death. <laughs> and Mark Singer's just holding on to this thing. Like, he's kind of holding it far enough away from him. Like, like, Mark Singer was like, I don't want this fucker to bite me in the face. Yeah. But he has to keep the scene going. So he's like, (laughs) well, look at you, you know, and then he lays back and he's got it on the, like on his chest, but he's like holding onto it and then it bites one of his nipples. (laughs) Well, I'm going to name you, I'm going to name you Kodo after my dog. Mm. And then from above, (laughs) uh, you get a name too, Podo, (laughs) Kodo and Podo, my friend. (laughs) <laughs> and they're like, me, 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 me. 
<laughs> and it's like, all right, nice, man. You, you are building your team. That's what you're doing. And then it just cuts to him dry and clean. <laughs> and like, walking down the lane. <laughs> Kodo and Podo are in his purse. I forgot to tell you, the man's got a purse. No big deal. Yeah. It's and a rucksack, man. I knew you would say that. It's a purse. <laughs> Anyway, they're cute. They're like hanging out of it, looking. He's climbing rocks and stuff. The eagle is above him. Now, we never actually hear the eagle's name in this movie, but the eagle's name is Chirac. Mm. We just hear. <laughs> and the eagle gives him a vision. Uh, and he, he can see through the eyes of another animal. And it's being chased by some Jun barbarians. Okay. And it's being hunted. And he's like, what the hell's going on? Shit. A beast in trouble. Yeah. The eagle kind of points in the direction that it's in, so off they go. Over the ridge, they find three or four John barbarians. Like, they got this beast, okay? They got it They got it tied to a post, and it turns out it is a fucking black tiger, baby. Damn. It's awesome looking. I love it. It's not a panther. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in nine countries. Yeah. They dyed a tiger black to make this movie. Yeah. They used, like, L'Oreal hair dye, okay? <laughs> and apparently it faded pretty quick. <laughs> so whenever the tiger, like, drinks, like, you can kind of see it comes off of his face. But it really doesn't matter, dude, because for the most part, he looks great. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. It's like a teenage tiger. Like, you can only work with teenage tigers. Yeah. So when they're full grown, they will eat you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sadar holds up Kodo and Podo, and he's like, he's in trouble. We'll help. And there's these two assholes with swords, and they're, like, poking at the tiger. And then there's another guy on a horse with a crossbow. The two guys poking the tiger, okay? One of them's like, oh, man, have you ever fucked a tiger, bro? <laughs> no, it's cool. Dar's like, oh, yeah, okay, that's not happening. So he pulls out his caber, <laughs> and then he gets attacked from behind by the fourth raptor you never even knew was there. Oh, shit. So this is his very first time in combat as a barbarian, you know? And he chose the life of barbarianhood. Yeah. So he just rolls around in the dirt with this guy. <laughs> and he's, like, half naked. He gets on top of him, and he's kind of like, you smell that? <laughs> and the guy's like, oh, God, yeah, you you win. <laughs> like Mark Singer's crotch is like right in this dude's face. <laughs> you smell it? <laughs> anyway, I guess he kills him. And then the bowman on the horse, he's like, oh, shit, there's trouble. I'm coming. And then he aims and Dar throws the caber. <laughs> and the, the barbarian just ducks it. Hmm. And it's like, oh, that's all you get. That's all it takes. <laughs> Oh, but, it, you know, it's a glaive, so it's boomerang-like, and it comes back, hits that fucker in the back. It's great. Nice. The eagle is, like, ripping dude's eyes out. I don't know. Uh, the two guys poking the tiger, they, like, zip up and come to help. Dar kills one, and then he cuts the tiger's rope, and the tiger just mauls the last one. <laughs> and just, you know, eats his ass. <laughs> and it's like, all right, man. Fucking black tigers. Right? Fuck yeah. Dar's like packing up his stuff, okay? And then above him, the eagle, Wee! I have my eyes. And then he, you know, Kodo and Podo jump up. <laughs> I have my cunning. And then roar, the tiger comes lumbering up to him. Black tiger. <laughs> and now I have my strength. And he like pats the tiger, you know, that slap pat that you do to like big dogs. Yeah. Your name is Roar. <laughs> I heard that and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna have to say that like 500 times. <laughs> and Rue's like, yeah, cool, man. <laughs> and then they're like, running slow motion through the wilderness together. <laughs> Suddenly they find a couple of topless chicks in a waterfall. How about that? I'm wet! <laughs> <laughs> and they're frolicking. Dar turns into a boner barbarian. Let's go for it! <laughs> he like lays down to watch him and he's kind of like slowly humping the ground. <laughs> this is his first time seeing a naked woman. 
he turns to Rue and he's like, yeah, this is what I love about being in a, you know, a Bronze Age barbarian, man. <laughs> you you, you want to go fuck with them? And all the animals are like, fuck yeah! <laughs> Koto and Poto, uh, they go to steal some underwear. Let's do this. <laughs> and they steal Tanya Roberts' underwear. Okay? Mm. She's topless, but... Uh, you know, she, she's wearing clothes, but she just has the top pulled down. Her clothes are made out of animal skin. The underwear they steal is white cotton. You go figure, <laughs> all right? She sees Koto and Poto running off with her skivvies, and she's like, hey! And she goes to chase them, and then Rrr, she runs into Rue. <laughs> okay? And she just freezes. Oh, Shit. <laughs> And then Dar just like grabs onto her from the behind and he gets up really close. He's like touching her face with his and he goes, don't move. The beast is fierce. <laughs> the beast is poking my leg and um, it's okay, but I wouldn't say it was fierce. <laughs> if we show no fear, we might escape. And then he like kind of walks up towards Rue. And this is where you get, you know what? Mark Singer was ripped for this movie, man. <laughs> yeah. He's not huge like, uh, you know, Conan or uh, Arnold, mm -hmm. but damn. <laughs> and he kind of acts like he's like taming the tiger, puts his arms out, but he's kind of smiling because she can't see his face. Like, Rue, you're doing great, man. <laughs> and then Rue just like, um, I just lay down. <laughs> and Dar's like, come on, man, get out of here. Fine. <laughs> and then <laughs> Rue leaves. Dar saunters back, all right? And he's like, you just got to show him who's boss, baby. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Uh, you owe me your life. But I'll accept this as payment. And then he kisses her. And he's like really rough with her. Damn. Yeah, he's a first timer. <laughs> She's like struggling, but still kissing back. <laughs> And then she takes his ass down, puts him in the dirt, and gets on top. Who are you? I am Dar. Dildar. <laughs> of the hill people. <laughs> Who sent you? No one. Jun's destroyed my village, and uh, I have sworn revenge. <laughs> you? Alone? <laughs> and then he like, rawr, he tackles her and gets on top. He shows her what's up. Now, who are you? I am Kiri, slave girl to the priests of the Temple of Ar. Dildar looks at her back, and it's all scarred up. He's like, they whip you like a beast. Well, I'm a slave. You know, what do you want? <laughs> Come with me. Run away. I'll protect you. You don't get it. I, I gotta go back, or my family will be killed. At this point, he, like, looks her up and down. <laughs> so what kind of slave are you? <laughs> Sex. <laughs> Wait, uh, y you mean... Yep. How, um, many? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> He's like, oh, shit. <laughs> then let me go with you. You would do well to forget me. Follow the Juns. You know, with them, you can die like a man, not like a blow-up doll, okay, with the priests, <laughs> all right? Goodbye. Goodbye, Dildar. Be careful. <laughs> so she leaves, and he's, like, just staring at her butt as she walks away. Rue walks up. You done fucked up, kid. <laughs> Dildar just pats him, like, yeah, I know. Kodo and Poto, they're like, yeah, sorry, Dar. You know, it doesn't always happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dildar, huh? That's your that's your full name? <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Should we go after her? And then he's like pining. He goes, Kiri. Yeah. And it's weird. So they follow. They follow her, but then they cannot find her. Hmm. Some beast master and friends, right? <laughs> it ends up getting pretty dark and foggy. And this is like the scene in the movie that always fucked with me as a kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's real dark and foggy. And he finds a mountain with this giant tree on top. And in the tree, there's all these lights like hanging. And this tree is just at the peak of this mountain. It's pretty cool looking. Mm -hmm. What the hell? That's uh, kind of ominous looking. You know what? Let's check it out. So they get up there and they find a bubbling cauldron next to this big black 
eagle statue. And, uh, you know, in the tree, the lights are these big, glowing, pulsing ball sacks. <laughs> and, <there's> like, <laughs> and also there is a cage with some rando dude just in the cage. Hey, man. <laughs> no one else is around and it's spooky as hell. Dar's looking at all this like, hmm, some shit going on here. The guy in the cage is just staring at him, like doesn't even talk to him. And then he and Rue go and smell the cauldron. And it's like, oh, Jesus. And Dar like stirs it with the big spoon. <laughs> and then just a whole bunch of dicks float up. And he's like, ah! he turns and there is a shit ton of silent figures behind him. Like they all snuck up on him and they're just standing there watching him. Damn. And they're all in the shadows. And man, they're, yeah, it's kind of scary. Kodo and Poto, they hide in the purse. Damn, I wanted some of that choop. <laughs> and then the rando guy is like, hey, um, could you, uh... <laughs> and Dar's like, yeah, sure. Uh, he slashes the cage and frees the guy, who just jumps out and cuts and runs. <laughs> okay? <laughs> he runs right through all these figures, and they're all wearing these like, big leather cloaks. It's pretty cool looking. He's just about out of there when he gets caught by one. The guy, like, spreads open his cloak, and it turns out it's wings, bro. Damn. Like big leathery wings. They're like bat creature people. Shit. And this thing just closes his wings around this guy. And he's like, Whoa! he's struggling inside. And the creature is just like Bleh! looking down at him. And they have no mouths also. It's fucking weird. And all of this goo starts slopping out the bottom of his wings. <laughs> and then finally he opens his wings up and nothing but bones fall out. Oh. Like that's how they eat. Like, through their whole body. Yeah. But he saved the dick. <laughs> and then he just throws it, and it flies over the whole camp and lands into the cauldron. Yeah. Soup. <laughs> who's who's going to drink the soup? Who says they're going to drink it? <laughs> Maybe it's part of some hereditary ritual. Gotcha. Maybe the dicks are their favorite parts. Uh, Maybe they bathe in it. Yeah, that's true. Then they all start closing in on Dar, and he's like, yeah, shit, okay. Mm. Maybe I'm not cut out for uh, barbarianing. <laughs> Shouldn't he be able to talk to him? That's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> but Rue is right next to him. He's like, all right, whose cock is first? <laughs> Let's do this. You ain't, you ain't taking down my pal. <laughs> and then, Sharak <laughs> swoops in and lands on Dar's arm, and all of these bat creatures just stop. And they're all staring at the eagle. And then they look at Dar and then they start backing up. And Shirak is like, yeah, check this out. And he swoops over and lands on the eagle statue that's there. And he's like, check it out, Dar. They fucking worship my ass. <laughs> and Dar's like, oh, my God, that is so cool. Man, it pays to be a beast master. <laughs> all right. Well, um, uh, let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and he starts slowly walking out. He's going between them all, and they're just watching him. And Dar's like, um, oh, okay then. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he runs into one, and it spreads its wings open, and he points his sword up like, come on, baby! And then it closes its wings, and its little, uh, its little wing hooks, you know? They close around his blade, and then something slides down the blade onto the hilt, and he looks at it, it's like a medallion, like it gave it to him, okay? And it's just staring at him, staring him in the eyes. Nice. Yeah, and he's like, oh, um, okay, I'll think, I'll, I'll check this out later, but I'm going to go. <laughs> later, the sun rises, and, you know, they're all, they've, they've, they camped, they're waking up. Kodo and Poto are like, man, we want soup. <laughs> we haven't eaten in days. What kind of a beast master are you? You have certain responsibilities. <laughs> he's just sitting there looking at this medallion. There's a big old dick on it. He's <laughs> like, this, course. this is cool. <laughs> All right, here's the thing. At some point, this sex panther has to start eating, and he's going to eat other animals. And when he does, he has to make sure the Beastmaster is not around. <laughs> the Beastmaster is going to have to like talk to these rabbits and be like, I'm sorry, he was my friend before I yeah, met you. Yeah, <laughs> you, you got to jump. You know what? Do us all a favor and just jump into his mouth. <laughs> Rue's like, you know, the Kodo and Poto are right. I... You do have responsibilities. I'm a tiger. 
<laughs> I have to consume like 50 pounds of meat a day. Okay, so come on. Make with the soup. <laughs> it's okay. He ate some Jun ass like like the day before. Yeah, he's true. still full. Anyway, he's looking at this dick medallion and he's like, all right, you know, kicking ass and making friends. I love it. Yeah. And then Chirac's like, come on, man, this way, bro. And he sees a city in the distance with a big, awesome pyramid in the center. We've already been here. This is a rook, okay? This is where we started. Mm -hmm. But he's never been here. It's a big, cool pyramid in the center and there's smoke rising from the top of it. Dar's like, okay, here we go. And the road is lined with bodies on poles. <laughs> he's like looking at him like, hmm. And then he looks at Rue and he's like, um, stay out of sight. You go hide. <laughs> so Rue runs off. I thought that was cute. You know, he's worried about his black tiger. I wish I had a black tiger. Yeah. Dar goes in and there is a moat of boiling poop around this city. <laughs> it's horrible looking. <laughs> And there's no one around, you know, inside the gates. Nobody's there. The place is empty. But you can hear, oh, the, everybody's probably gathered around the pyramid. So he steals a cloak and he puts on the hood, you know, he's walking. He's half naked. Remember that. Yeah. So now we hear Mayax in the distance and he's like, people of Arak, I, your high priest, demand your children. Obey my command. Somebody give me a salty dog. <laughs> and R will continue to protect you. Dargus of the Pyramid, er, yep, the whole city is gathered around Mayax, listening to him. And he's got this huge pit of fire up there. The sacrificial fire pit. Uh. Arr! Arr! <laughs> <laughs> Receive this child as a gift from your devoted servant. And he has a fucking child in his arms, like up above his head. Uh. And then he just throws it into the fire. Ah! Yeah. They murder a child in this movie. It's great. Yeah, yeah. It's like rated R. Yeah, back when it was cool. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, holy shit. Dar's like, I can't believe what I am seeing. <laughs> R is not yet satisfied. Hold back from R what is his, and uh, you will all perish by his hand. Will you dare this fate? Um, Give me that one. And then, the, you know, the priests go and, like, they rip a kid out of his parents' hands and they drag him up the pyramid. Kid's dad's crying, no, no. This kid is screaming. It's what I hate about killing kids is they will not <laughs> stop screaming. <laughs> Dar's like, there's so many guards around here. I don't really want to blow my cover, but damn, I got to do so. Hey, Kiri. And there's Kiri standing at the side of the pyramid, like, watching all the kids die. <laughs> and she's with the other sex slaves. So the guards drag this kid up. And then another guard, like, grabs the dad and, like, makes him watch. Max holds the baby up. You know, it's, like, I don't know, like a toddler. Only the blood of this child can make R look upon us as his children again. And it's like, man, this R, he's a shitty god. Yeah. Like, haven't these people heard of Krom? <laughs> what the hell's going on here <laughs> ain't you never heard of crom bro <laughs> this mayax guy he needs something to do somebody put him on the wheel of pain <laughs> do you know what the wheel of pain is is that what kid conan was pushing yeah, yeah. that's how he got all huge yeah on the wheel of pain Although, doesn't he deny Krom at the end of Conan? Yeah, I don't know. Like it, I it say, fuck you. <laughs> I do it myself. <laughs> Joe Boo. <laughs> Joe Boo. <laughs> I say, fuck you, Joe Boo. <laughs> All these fucking gods from movies that are like just part of our knowledge in our minds. <laughs> All these fictional fucking gods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who wins in a fight? Paymon or Joe Boo? <laughs> <laughs> I offer this sacrifice to you. Dar takes off his hood and it's like, Wee! Chirac is there. Too late though, Mayax drops that kid right into the fire pit. Ugh. But now we see that there's a slide that goes down into the fire. And the kid is like holding on. <laughs> on to this slide, okay? <laughs> Which has got to be so hot 
<laughs> he'd probably rather die. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but he's holding on. And Mayax like looks down and sees that and he points down with his staff and like pushes on the kid. Like pushing him down into the fire. Ho 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 <laughs> <laughs> And then Chirac swoops down, grabs this kid and flies away with him. And it is amazing. What? It's like this eagle is obviously not big enough to hold something so large, but he does, baby. <laughs> and he like flies way high up. Oh, damn. <laughs> like and just leaves town with the kid. <laughs> Dar's probably like, hmm. <laughs> w- where are you going, man? <laughs> Don't eat that baby. <laughs> shoop, shoop. <laughs> Mayak sees this and he's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? And the crowd, they're all like, oh, my God. And they just hit the deck. They, like, bow down. Something huge just happened. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they're all they're all bowing except Dar. He's just standing there. Fuck he's yeah. in his Yeah, he's in his cloak, but his hood is off. And Kiri is like, oh, shit, it's Dildar of the hill people. Mayax sees him, and he's like, the fuck is that guy? <laughs> Who the hell is that? Do you know him? Um, you see, <laughs> R has spoken. He wants your children. Uh, this guy, he is a kid killing maniac. Yeah. Does he think he didn't get the original kid? He assumes the kid was, was killed hmm. by the lady with the cow, I think. What, what's his beef now then? He just loves killing kids. Jesus, It's his whole thing. So it cuts to later that night, and Dar is walking around the city, like in his cloak and a really huge backpack. Okay? And it's cool, man. He he picks up Kodo and, like, lets him smell the backpack and then drops him on the ground. And Kodo, like, scurries through the streets, like, finding the house where this kid lives. Oh. So he knocks on the door, and the dad opens up. Um, I've got something for you. And then he opens the bag, and it's the kid. Oh, my God! My little light is alive! He's so happy, you know. Dar's like, all right, I did a good thing, and that's it. It's, it's time to go. But, Master! Master! I am Taco, and I am forever in your debt. What is mine is yours! And then Dar just looks at his wife. <laughs> and she nods. <laughs> like, oh, he gets yeah. erections. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I gotta go, man. But there was a girl in the pyramid. She's a friend. Come, come inside. At least let me offer you some soup. Kodo and Poto are like, oh, shit. <laughs> so they're eating and they're talking. And, you know, the Juns have slaughtered all of our young men in the in the city already. <laughs> and uh, now Mayax and his priests, they're in control and they breed us for our children. Like, this is just a baby killing machine. Ugh. The city of Uruk. Dar's like, that. that's great, but what about the girl? Okay. <laughs> oh, the slave girls. They were taken back to the temple, you know, for uh, double anal. <laughs> and then they're going to be sacrificed. I must find her. Which way did the Juns go? North, but Mayax promises they'll return. And then Dar like smiles at the kid and he's like, then so shall I. <laughs> Thank you, friend. And then it cuts to Mayax and his pig bitches, okay? And they're talking to a couple priests. And Mayax is like, R wants this stranger. Bring him to me, this master of the beasts. This ring will help you find him. And this ring that he gives this priest is, like, big and ugly. But he puts it on. Anyway, later in the wilderness, Dar and Rue are walking. They're like, man, it is so hot. <laughs> In Beastmaster world, <laughs> they find a little bit of water and they start drinking. All of a sudden, uh, Rue has a white mouth. <laughs> okay. How'd you like to be the guy that re dyes the mouth? I of know. The tiger? <laughs> <laughs> then Dar, he, he looks at Rue. He's like, okay, go on ahead. Go ahead, you know, keep a lookout. And then Dar showers naked. And right above him, we see there's a hand. Somebody's up in the tree watching him, and they're wearing the ring. It's that priest. Oh. Like, that was quick. The ring opens up, and there is a human eye inside of it. That is cool, buddy. Oh, yeah. And it, like, moves around. 
<laughs> like as <laughs> quick as a yeah. human eye, it's cool, man. <laughs> the pig bitches can see him in the cauldron and they're like, yeah. He opens up his hand to catch some water and they all see the the mark on his palm like, holy shit, that's him. <laughs> That's him. See the brand? See? Yeah, I knew it. It's Zed's son. Kill him. Kill him now. And then the priest up in the tree like snares him with one of those dog snares on a stick. Mm-hmm. And he's got him around the neck and he's just hanging him and choking him. Dar's like, oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> come on. Kill him now. Like, yeah, come on. <laughs> and the priest is like, <laughs> man, I got you, dude. <laughs> this was too easy. And then in the tree above the priest is Rue. Fuck yeah. And he's like, rawr, rawr. <laughs> and the guy's like, oh shit. Rue gets to eat some ass for dinner. <laughs> he only eats the butt. Yeah. I love it when they haven't washed. <laughs> Turns out that priest had a couple of buddies with him, and Rue goes and chases him. Okay. And then Dar just kind of sits down and watches through Rue's eyes. And he's like, oh, man, he is going to kill this guy. (laughs) He's going to be so awesome. And this priest is just running his ass off. There is a big-ass black tiger behind him, okay? (laughs) All of a sudden, Rue falls into a covered pit. Like, they they laid a trap. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, shit! The priest is like, LOL, fuckface, what's up? (laughs) Rue's looking up. He's like, you are fucking dead, pal. Oh, my God. The priest is about to shoot him with a crossbow when all of a sudden he gets hit over the head with a stick. So he falls. And then, uh, holy shit, it is big old beautiful John Amos. Fuck yeah. Yeah. You know this guy? He played uh, Major Grant from Die Hard 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. The, 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 The bad guy's second in command. Mm-hmm. This is a serious dude. <laughs> you don't fuck with him. And he's a fucking barbarian in this movie. Fuck yeah. He's like bald with a fucking ponytail on the top of his head. <laughs> and he fights with a staff. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a huge cock if that's your weapon of choice. <laughs> he was a boxer. Yeah. And then he got drafted into the Kansas City Chiefs yep. and then turned it down to be a writer. And then he became the dad on good times. <laughs> <laughs> dude. What else can you say? <laughs> John Amos also has this boy with him, you know, that's that's traveling with him. He's like a 13-year-old kid, I guess. The priest stands up and he throws his grappling hook right at the kid's face. And, yep, Amos just catches it on his staff. Brrr, and he's like, you motherfucker. And then he just bops that priest right in the face with his staff, just like I did to you with that broomstick as a kid. Remember that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You went rolling down that hill? Mm-hmm. That was horrible. Right in the eye. Yeah. I talked about it at your wedding. <laughs> so he falls into Rue, and they just watch him die. <laughs> mm-hmm. Amos looks at the kid. He's like, you see that shit? You face a beast on his own terms. You're fucked. <laughs> Amos, look. And Dar comes, like, running up. <laughs> and he pulls out his sword. Shing! Okay, what are you going to do to my tiger, man? <laughs> Amos just pulls out his staff and gets ready to kick Dar's ass. Dar has a sword, and my money is on Amos. <laughs> Dar looks down in the hole, and he sees Rue is okay. And he's like, oh, I'm, uh, I'm indebted to you. Damn right you are. Let's do this. Gee, let me sing. Um, sure. (laughs) Dar goes to try to push a log down into the hole so Rue can escape, and he can't even lift it. So Amos has to help him. (laughs) So they do that together, and Rue gets out. Fuck yeah, man. Is, um, is he yours? Well, you know, we fight together sometimes. Okay, thanks. I'll see ya. (laughs) Wait, friend. Who are you? I'm Dildar of the Hill People. (laughs) There are no more Hill People. Yeah, thanks to the Juns, I'm the last one. Who are you, friend? I'm called Amos. This is Tal. We're pilgrims on our way to worship at the Temple of Ar. You know, where they kill the babies and stuff. (laughs) Dildar can tell that he's lying. (laughs) I've never seen a pilgrim who can use a staff like you. Yeah, well, I work out. (laughs) 
I too am on my way to worship at the Temple of Ar, you know, in the north. There's safety in numbers. Let's travel together. And then, do 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 do. It's nighttime. And they're camping. Amos and Tal, by the way, they're just wearing like robes, you know, pilgrim robes. And Amos, uh, we cut to Amos like already telling Dar the truth. <laughs> He's like, yeah, look, um, we fled the city of Aruk. <laughs> okay, <laughs> when Mayak showed up, uh, Tal, he is the king's son. He's King Zed's son. And he is now of age. And it's time for him to go and free his father, his royal pimpness. Because <laughs> he's being imprisoned in the pyramid. Dar's like, hey, I just came from a rook, and Mayax is in charge. It's going to be difficult to beat him. Tal's like, I'm freeing my father. Fuck yeah, boy. Fuck yeah. So how is it you've come to travel with all these animals, Dildar? They're my friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always been told my abilities with animals is is uncommon. Um, I see through their eyes. They see through mine. They know my thoughts. I know theirs. And he pulls out Kodo and Podo. Here you go. Kids love these fuckers. <laughs> They're my thieves. They steal anything they can get their hands on. And as you can see, uh, well, here you go. And he dumps out the purse and all this jewelry falls out. <laughs> the kid picks up the eye ring. And Dar's like, oh, yeah, hey, if you like that, go ahead and keep it. You know, this shit just appears in the purse. (laughs) Okay, they take whatever they want. Tal picks up a necklace, okay? And he's like, Amos. Amos sees it, and he's like, where'd you get this, motherfucker? (laughs) Huh? Oh, I didn't even know that was in there, man. Uh, It's from a slave girl I met. Nah, man, this comes from no slave girl. Yeah, dude. I'm, okay, seriously. I'm following her to save her and then, you know, get it on. I'm hoping. <laughs> Amos looks serious as hell. Oh, you know what? We leave at dawn. Well, hey, who is this girl? And Tal's like, she's my cousin, Kiri. Oh. Hmm. Your cousin's hot, dude. <laughs> so they go to sleep. While they're sleeping, Tal's ring opens up and we see the eye. Oh, God. Dar can't sleep, so he communes with Shirak, who then flies away. And then he's watching through his eyes. And Shirak is flying over hills and countryside until he sees this group of people. And there's all these red-robed priests and then these chicks dressed in white. Amos and Tal notice what, what he's doing, and they're like, Hey, uh, so what, what, what's up? What are you doing? They've left the temple. To where? This way. What are they wearing? <laughs> Sexy stuff. Five women in white and the priests in red to be sacrificed. We must save her. But we're outnumbered. Let's make some plans, baby. So then it just cuts to daylight and the slave group is coming up. You know, they're all on foot <laughs> and they're coming to a ferry boat. Okay, the kind, you know, is just a raft in a river and you got to pull a rope to get across. Yeah. And the ferrymen are our cloaked heroes. So one priest starts like getting a little rough with Kiri and she kicks him in the balls. So he starts drowning her in the river. (laughs) And that's when Amos whips off his cloak. And Amos is wearing barbarian leather. (laughs) And he is a sight to behold. Like they give they they make sure you see some skin on this motherfucker. You see all this half ass, you know, and he's just this this big old beautiful shiny black guy. And it's like when you were watching this movie as a kid, you never knew this, but your mom was watching it going, "Oh. Well, look at that." So they start fighting these priests and uh Amos kills 3 to Dar's 1. Okay? Amos is a better warrior. Kiri sits up, you know, out of the water. She was choking, and uh, she turns around, and there's Rue, okay? And she's only seen him once before, so she gets scared. (laughs) And then Dar grabs her from behind, and he's like, don't move. (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) This beast is fierce. Beauty and the beast. Master. Good work, man. <laughs> Play that shit again. Beauty and 
Beauty and the Beast. Basta. <laughs> <laughs> so they kick everybody's ass, and the priests that are left, they tie them all up. And then they tie them together, and then they tie them to this big heavy barrel that's on the boat. And then a whole bunch more with crossbows come over the hill. So they're like, holy shit, let's haul ass. They start pulling on the rope and they're trying to get across the river. Amos is like, we're not going to make it. Lighten the load. And then Kiri just kicks that barrel right off of the boat and murders those three priests. (laughs) They just follow it in and drown. (laughs) And Dar's like, damn, girl. (laughs) Then he cuts the rope and they escape. They just drift down the river. Later, they're just, you know, lazing in the sun on the boat. And Tal's like, Wait, will you help us free my father? Dar looks over at Kiri, who's like barely dressed. <laughs> hey, uh, why don't you uh, send your cousin over here to ask me? <laughs> so Tal does that. She comes over. What can I do to convince you to help us? I don't know. I'm very busy. Uh, rescue will take some time. Uh, <laughs> and then she just starts making out with him. Damn. Tal looks at Amos. I think he's going to help us. Yeah, I have a feeling he might. Kiri's like, so you'll come? I just did. (laughs) And then we get a travel montage. Where? I'm not sure. I guess they're heading back to Aruk. I'm still unclear of where they were going in the first place before they turned around. I don't know. Mm. So if both Tal and Dar are the sons of... Zed? Yeah? Kiri is also Dar's cousin? She certainly is, Chris. Oh. Dar doesn't know that he is the son of Zed. Gotcha. In a barbarian world, that's enough degree of separation. In a barbarian world, I'm sure it is quite common. (laughs) Don Coscarelli in the director's commentary for this movie, (laughs) he's like, yeah, I feel like we never properly dealt with that. (laughs) Outside of a rook, um, Amos actually splits off to go and find rebels to help, you know, attack the pyramid. He's like, and I'll, I'll meet you in two days' time. And it cuts to a rook, and we see Taco, remember? The father of the boy? Mm-hmm. And up above him is Chirac going, Wee! Taco's like, oh, what? Me? Can't you just tell him uh, that you didn't find me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a coward. All right, fine, I'll come. And then it just cuts to them sneaking into town, buried under the hay in Taco's hay wagon. Oh. You know, everybody's got a hay wagon. <laughs> so they're sneaking in, and Tao's eye ring opens up again. Still no one has noticed this, okay? Yeah. And Mayax and the pig bitches, they're watching them in the, in the cauldron. <laughs> so they both still live, but they won't escape me. This time, we shall welcome them. So our heroes get to the pyramid, okay? And there's like no one around. Taco says, I shall wait for you on the north side. So they enter the pyramid. And I I don't know why, but I love this part as a kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, Rue goes with them too. So it's like, (laughs) fuck yeah. Can't go wrong with a black tiger, baby. (laughs) And he's actually leading. (laughs) So they're going down this corridor and there's all these chains and torches and cages that are like low mm-hmm. and they're walking by them and Dar's looking in and it's too dark it's, it's pretty quiet and then slowly these black claws start like grabbing the bars from inside the cages and we see these glowing eyes in the cages it's actually scary as hell like <laughs> as a kid anyway it was like oh jesus <laughs> and then rah, they all start going crazy and it it's just like the berserkers in Nightbreed. Yeah. Okay, you remember that? And the, all their arms are like covered in spikes and they're like shaking the cage bars and stuff. And uh, they can actually reach out of the cage and grab them if they wanted. So Dar actually has to jump up and climb along the hallway on the chain. <laughs> and he does it all slow. And I this is to make us believe he's doing something like hard and... Yeah. It, it's, it's his physique that allows him to do this. <laughs> he gets to the end and then he pulls, uh, he yanks a crank <laughs> and the cage is closed. <laughs> so it's all good. And then Tal's like, death guards. That's what those were. They fuck. 
And Dar <laughs> hears that and he just looks at Kiri. And Kiri just nods. <laughs> So they run down the hall and there's like prison cells in the floors and they look through one and they see these priests with a guy strapped down to a table and Tal just starts, that's how a death guard is made. Um, extreme fisting transforms the man oh. and it transforms him into a wild beast. <laughs> oh, look, they, those priests have keys. We need to steal those keys. Dar's like, well, shit, that's best left up to thieves time for kodo and podo baby he pulls them out and kiri is like she has this look on her face like she is so impressed with (laughs) dildar (laughs) and how he operates she smiles and looks at him like i'm gonna do whatever you want (laughs) when we're done here so he lowers the 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 ferrets in and at that point Kiri sneaks off and goes through some secret door down the hall. And it's like, what the hell? She a bad guy, you know? Yeah. See, they're fisting him. And now they're going to put glowing leeches up his ass. And they do that. And these leeches are like glowing green. And the guy's like, ah! And now he will kill anything he meets. And so they have made a new death guard. And they have to put this big leather mask on him. And as soon as they do, uh, his eyes start glowing green. And he's like, he's got all this, the spikes on their arms. They're just leather pads with spikes. These death guards, they're just super S&M gimps. Damn. Yeah. The priests are unable to control him, and he breaks his bonds and kills them and tries to kill Kodo and Podo. He he actually ends up breaking their string. They get the keys, but then they have to run away, and the super gimp just chases them. Then Kiri comes back out of the door, and she's wearing a new outfit, which is no less revealing, you know, and sexy, but this time she's got a knife. And she's like, this way, follow me. So she was just like, going to the secret changing room. Yeah. Dar's like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> he looks at Tal, why is she dressed up like that? To sex you up. What about Kodo and Podo? <laughs> They'll catch up. Come on. So they go deeper into the pyramid and they find, they find King Zed. Just sitting in a cell. <laughs> they look through the, the bars on the door, and he's just sitting there moping in his cell. <laughs> he's an old man now. Dar's like, man, we need those keys. <laughs> but they're with Kodo and Podo, who are still being chased by this super gimp. <laughs> Kiri just tries the door, and it's open. So that's convenient. <laughs> they go in, but Dar does not. And he's like, um... He gets a funny feeling, and he walks down the hall, and around the corner, there's a priest waiting for him with a sword. Oh. So he's going to ambush him, and we know that Dar is awesome, but he's not invincible, okay? <laughs> uh, but then all of a sudden, Rue just comes at the priest from the other side. Nice. So in Dar's vision, he just sees an empty hallway, and then Rue saving his life out of the blue. It's cool, man. <laughs> So Dar's like, oh, that's cool. Uh, so he goes into the cell and sees both of his friends staring at, at King Zed. Dar walks up to him and he lifts Zed's head up and that guy's got no eyes. He's like an old man with no eyes. And he just goes, what's up, dog? <laughs> then Dar like wraps a blindfold around him so that everyone else knows that he's blind. <laughs> Uncle Zed, it's me, Kiri. Oh, shit. Sup, shorty? <laughs> My life sucks. <laughs> it's okay, we're getting you out of here. And then, clank, the cell door closes, and there's Mayax and a pig bitch. Like, uh, <laughs> it was a trap. <laughs> that is he, the one whom the prophecies spoke of. They'll be sacrificed come dawn. And then... Rue is coming down the hallway. <laughs> and Mayax and the pig bitch look down. They see him coming at him, And they're like, oh, shit. <laughs> and they unlock the door and jump in the cell with our heroes. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> like, better that than, <laughs> than to face the black tiger. <laughs> Mayax, uh, this new turn of events, he just points at Dar and yells to the pig bitch, kill him. <laughs> So then she attacks and she's like, you know, all slow and 
creepy, right? And uh, he's like, okay, it's cool. I got a sword. You know, I could take you. And then she just pow, pow, does this big flash crap on him with all of this sand, and it blinds him. Oh, jeez. So he's all disoriented. Tal runs up to Mayax and just starts beating him on the chest with his fists. You know, <laughs> like, a, like a kid. Okay? So Amos was wrong about Tal. It was not time. Mayax is like, oh, sweet. A kid to kill. <laughs> I love this shit. You hurt my father. And then King Zed is like, huh? Tal? Dar, still blinded, he just he has decided to just swing his sword around and hopefully hit the pig witch. Oh, God. All right. And it, you know what happens? It's actually very cool. <laughs> she just slinks backwards and starts climbing up the wall like a spider. Mm. You know, crab walking with her legs spread and stuff. Yeah. It's creepy, man. And then she does it onto the ceiling and she's just up above Dar. And it's... It's creepy looking, man. Like, that part was well done. Dar, still swinging his sword around, he then looks through Rue's eyes. Because Rue is just, like, looking through the cage door. Yeah. <laughs> and he can see the pig bitch up on the ceiling. So then Dar's like, oh, sweet. Thanks, Rue. Yeah. And just stabs upwards and kills her. Nice. When he does that, he actually twirls around and twists the blade in her stomach. <laughs> it's like, a damn, Dar. So she's dead, and Kiri ends up, like, cutting Mayax's hand a little bit. Rue finally breaks the door down, and Mayax is like, Oh, shit, all right. Uh, there's a secret door somewhere in a cell. I'll use that to get out. And he does. It's like, King Zed's like, I wish I knew that was there, man. It's been 20 years. So it's all good, and it's time to escape. Zed's like, son, tell. Can you walk? Shit, yeah, man. So they start sneaking out. We cut to Kodo and Poto being chased by the super gimp, <laughs> like down hallways and shit. And they end up going into a broken pipe that has all these holes in it. So the super gimp, like every once in a while, sees them and they just create antics, you know, baiting and pissing him off. Mm hmm. So it's funny, and he keeps chasing him. Now, this super gimp, he's wearing a thong with just a giant skull over his dick. <laughs> he's also wearing leather leggings that connect to nothing, like full <laughs> leg leggings. They're covered in studs and spikes. And it's just like Don Coscarelli like, went all out, like, nobody wears pants in this movie. <laughs> Like these, these, they're called the death guards in the movie. They are a sight to behold. Yeah. Okay. The others end up finding this room that has all of these tunnels in the wall and in the floors. And then one giant stone skull in the middle of the room. And it's like, man, I love a good set piece. You know, <laughs> this is just, this is a cool part of the movie. <laughs> Fucking the, the inner workings of a pagan pyramid. <laughs> Tal goes over and turns on a crank to, like, you know, like he's been there before. Mm -hmm. It's cool. I've seen it. <laughs> he turns the crank and the skull lifts up and there's a tunnel with stairs underneath it. Dar looks at Rue and he's like, protect them. So Rue goes down first and then the other two lead uh, Zed down. Kiri's like, Dar, let's go. This is the only way out of the city. Go then. I'll cover your escape. Please, Dar. And she like shows him one boob. <laughs> and then he just looks at her and goes, I can't leave without my little ones. And it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's a good guy. <laughs> Damn, dude. All right. Dildar, you are the greatest. <laughs> Go on. I'll catch up. So they leave. He hears commotion. There's a bunch of priests coming. Okay. They see him <laughs> and they start running for that door. He locks it. Then he goes to try to reverse the skull and lower it back down, and the crank's not working. Mm. And there's this weird skull pipe underneath it, and he's just like, um, I think I understand how pyramids work. <laughs> so he chops this pipe in half, and all this water starts spilling out, and then the skull drops. Mm. So it, Don Coscarelli was like, engineering. <laughs> 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 like, how pyramids work. <laughs> so at least they're safe, you know? The super gimp is now chasing Kodo and Poto. He's down these hallways, and they run right down the hallway 
to that door, which all these priests are banging on. So they just slip under the door, and the super gimp just starts fucking the priests. <laughs> and they're like, ah! <laughs> It's so big. <laughs> Kodo and Poto show up to Dar and they're like, hey, Dar, what's up? We got the keys. He's like, yeah, um, yeah, I, I don't need them now, though. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You know, thanks. <laughs> well, you're a little late. Kiri actually shows back up. I don't know how she got through the skull thing. She took another direction. Obviously, she knows her way around the pyramid, you know? She grabs some rope and she's like, come on, we can take, uh, we can escape through the the air shafts and that's what all the other tunnels are and it's just like don coscarelli (laughs) you put the indiana jones people to shame buddy (laughs) so they climb up one of these holes and it's like an upward incline they go in there just as the super gimp busts in and he sees him go up the pipe so they get up to the top and the hole actually exits to a cliff side like a sheer cliff and the super gimp is coming up. It's like, oh shit. They drop the rope and they start climbing down. But they are only like halfway when the super gimp gets to the exit and sees them. And he's like, Aah! and he starts like slashing at the rope, but he cannot really control his fine motor skills. <laughs> so it takes him a couple of tries. He, he It's not really getting it. And then, Shirok's flying around like, I see you, bitch. There's some shit going on. <laughs> Dar does his... Thing. <laughs> and Chirac goes and attacks the super gimps, like clawing his eyes out and stuff. And then he falls to his death. Oh, nice. Yep. But the rope is cut and it's starting to splinter apart. Oh. Dar sees this and he just turns and he yells down to Kiri, Down now! <laughs> and she's like, Um, okay. And then the rope breaks and they fall. Oh. And it's like, Oh, shit. They land. In Taco's hay wagon. Nice. He's like, yeah, I'm here. I told you. (laughs) They drive right by the dead super gimp. (laughs) And they start riding out of the city. Taco's like, oh, no, the gate. It's shut. Does it have a counterweight? Yes. So Dar pulls out Kodo and Poto. (laughs) It's time for you guys to save my ass again. You two are going to open that gate for us. Oh, yes, of course master so he ties them to a string and then he gives the string to Chirac who then carries them up to the top of the wall Kodo and Poto seem like the kind of thing Chirac would want to eat (laughs) you know what I'm saying yeah but you know it's cool they are family yeah man so they climb up and they start to chew on the rope for the counterweight and there's a guard standing there who just turns and sees them doing it (laughs) he's like what the who Everybody's down there waiting for them to open the gate when a priest rides around with a whole shit ton of super gimps. Oh, damn. Yeah, and they're all like, (laughs) Dar's like, oh, shit. He grabs Kiri, throws her into the hay wagon, jumps in, and just yells to Taco, head for the gate. They will get it open. (laughs) Taco's like, "Uh, okay. So they're riding like full bore towards a closed gate. We see that guard has actually grabbed Kodo and is like laying him out flat to like slowly cut him in half. Like he's he's bored and he wants mm-hmm. to kill something. Yeah. And then Poto scurries up his leg and starts eating his balls. <laughs> ah! And he ends up slamming his sword down and cuts the counterweight rope. So the gate just flies up. <laughs> they get out and then on the way by, Dar turns and cuts another rope for the gate, and it slams down. Oh, nice. So they're out, and the super gimps are in. They are in! <laughs> Kodo and Poto jump into the wagon, and everybody's... It's cool. They all just ride away. Later, the super gimps, like, raped the entire town. Because remember, they're loose in the city. Yeah. No one can get out either. Because <laughs> there's, <a>, mo- <laughs> there's a moat of boiling shit around it. <laughs> No choice but to submit. So now we cut to our heroes around a campfire. Also, Amos has showed up with a whole bunch of rebels. There's like 30 of them. And King Zed, he's like, oh, old man with a blindfold. Check it. Even though I can't see, it's cool. You 35 warriors strong can crush Mayax. 
Know what I'm saying? <laughs> Him and his monsters must die. Go and take a rook. Give them the death they deserve, bitch. Dar speaks up. He's like, no, that's not the answer. Like, what the fuck? If you do that, you will only bring down the wrath of the Jun horde. Okay? You need an army. Who is this bitch talking? <laughs> he is a friend. He is the beast master. You must listen to him, uncle. He saved your life. Dar steps forward and the blind Zed, okay, he like, reaches his hands out and starts feeling on his body. <laughs> and he like touches his muscles and he's like, ooh. <laughs> and then he like reaches down and touches his dick and he's like, eh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> no. Fuck that. He a freak. He a freak who speaks to animals. And it's like, oh shit. Fucking asshole. For real? Yeah. But father, Zed pushes Dar away. He's like, I need no cowards by my side, bitch. Dar just like looks hurt and he looks over at Amos like, you going to say something, man? Yeah. And Amos just looks down like, whoa, no. Yeah. And Kiri does that too. Rue is like, oh, God. Yeah, let's go, Dar. Fuck these fucks. So they walk away. Dar's like, uh, okay, I guess I'll go back to wandering the wastes. Jeez. Yeah. As he's leaving, King Zed yells out, go crawl down a hole with your animals. <laughs> We see that Dar actually has tears running down his face. Jesus. Nobody likes me. And the music's all sad. <laughs> Kodo and Poto are like, we love you, Dildar. My friends. And then he, he like sits down and draws in the dirt. He draws the logo for the hill people. He misses home, man. Yeah, why did this? Why this shit have to happen? And this is what you get when you help people. I know, right? So he's just sitting there crying. And then all of a sudden... From behind his back, a lady hand comes around and snakes up under his loincloth, and it is Kiri. She followed him, and it's like, <laughs> Will you go with me now? I cannot leave. Well, then I'll stay with you. Oh, come on. You know that's impossible now. The king hates you, and, like, no one's going to challenge him. You will all die. Well, it's my duty. I I have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. Basta. <laughs> <laughs> so she leaves. And back at the camp, Zed is talking with Amos. And he's like, we're going to attack the city at dawn. Okay, Tao, he's going to go with me. He be my eyes. But Tal ain't shit. He gonna be a man now. Amos, you take 15 of these boys and you attack the main gate. Right then, Tal's ring opens up. And, uh, Mayax and the pig bitches, <laughs> they listen to the whole plan. <laughs> Amos finally sees the eye and he's like, what the hell? <laughs> hey, uh, Zed... <laughs> Uh, Mayax just, I think he heard our whole plan. Mayax is like, <laughs> can you believe this shit? Can you believe this ring thing worked for so long? <laughs> Amos is looking at the ring and he just like grabs a fire stick out of the fire and, and he pokes it and it like, ah, and bleeds. Yeah. And then one of the pig bitches, her eye like explodes out of her head and all this, there's all this blood oh, nice. and she's screaming. And Mayax is like, oh, okay, what are you going to do? <laughs> it lasted a long time, though. Come on. <laughs> Amos says, Zed, we got to run, man. Many years ago, Mayax killed my wife and stole my kid. And now he going to pay. He going to die. <laughs> and Amos is like, Man, we are doomed. 
The next morning, Dildar and the animals wake up, and they're like, okay, let's go keep being losers. And then he hears some horses, and there's one rider leading another horse, and he finally gets to him, and it's Taco. Mm. Beastmaster, we need your help. The attack failed. And Kiri? Captured, along with all of the other important characters. <laughs> They're going to be sacrificed at sunset. You gotta save them. Also, my wife left me for a super gimp. <laughs> <laughs> and I need a place to stay. <laughs> it cuts to the whole gang being wheeled up to the pyramid for burning. <laughs> And they're all wearing, like, white sacrificial robes. And it's just a cage on wheels. Okay? It's a wooden cage. Barbarian days, you know. Bronze Age. They couldn't make everything out of metal. Yeah. All right, super Gimps took all the hardware. That's right. The city's gathered around. They're like, yeah, burn them! Yeah! <laughs> Dar comes riding into the city. The priests pull Kiri out, and before they take her up the steps, they rip her robes to, to like, show some side cheek. Yeah. You know, just to make sure you see some of her butt. (laughs) (laughs) Zed is chained up at the top of the pyramid, like, in a chair. He's an old guy. (laughs) Mayax addresses the crowd. Your King Zed has denied the god R, and now he will die, as will his kin. Dar comes riding through the gate. He goes right through the crowd up to the pyramid, baby. He throws his purse into the wagon cage uh, so Kodo and Poto can start chewing some ropes, babe. Mm. That is what they do. Meep, meep. (laughs) Dar jumps off the horse and just starts running up the pyramid. Immediately just starts fighting and killing priests and guards. (laughs) It's time to stop fucking around. (laughs) You know, and it's awesome. dun 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 Tal and Amos escape, okay? And then Amos whips off his robe to reveal his leather gear again. (laughs) And again, your mother is like, hmm, pristine black man with a ponytail (laughs) and a huge crotch cup. (laughs) Yeah! Taco just like throws him a sword, which he just immediately gives to Tal, and then he rips a bar off of the cage to use as his staff. Uh. And they just start kicking ass, except Kiri, because, you know, she's going to burn. Rue shows up to help, and, uh, you know, he starts eating butts, <laughs> maybe a couple of balls. He's never tried those before. <laughs> they lay Kiri across a table on top, you know, instead of throwing her into the fire, and she gets knocked out. Mayax raises up his dagger to stab. And Dar is almost there. It's like, come on, dude. That's your lady. King Zed's like, man, fuck that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he a freak. <laughs> Dar ends up sending this one priest like, sliding down all the steps. <laughs> 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 the interesting thing about that is that that was that stunt man's very first day on the job. Oh, wow. And all the other stunt guys were like, no, nah, man, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so apparently when you start stunt work, you got to do something fucking nuts. Yeah. And it's actually, you're doing something stupid, but it ends up looking like courage. Yeah, yeah. And that's how you like break into the game. <laughs> The crowd's cheering, yeah, kill her, kill her. Dar closes in. The pig bitches look at Mayax and they're like, you are doomed. The unborn has arrived, Mayax. Dar finally gets on top. He's killing guards and Mayax takes Zed hostage even more. (laughs) He just like holds a knife up to him. Dar's doing great, you know, cling clanging around the top of the pyramid. He even turns around and does a behind the back stabbing to kill a guy. Oh, nice. Mayax says to King Zed, Your unborn son has returned to fulfill the prophecy. Fuck you talking. <laughs> I defy this false prophecy, Zed. Join your lost son. And then he guts King Zed. Uh. Oh, shit. And then he just jumps for Dar. He's got that knife. He's like, that's it. 
<laughs> it's time for me to just do this. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> if you want something done. <laughs> Dar catches Mayax and then rolls backwards and does like a backwards somersault flip Mayax over your back thing. Yeah. And Mayax is like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I'm like 70. <laughs> They wrestle around, Mayax gets on top, they're struggling, and then Dar finally gets his knife and puts it right into Mayax's gut. Ah, shit. Mm. But he doesn't die. He just kind of sits down. <laughs> and like, <laughs> just, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sit it out for a minute. <laughs> There is one pig bitch left. Oh, jeez. And she like, <sighs> she hisses at Dar, who stands up, turns, and stabs her. She goes, <laughs> and her cloak just falls. Uh, man, every time you try to kill one of these ladies, you know? Yeah. Except for the one down in the pyramid on the ceiling, she just died. <laughs> so her cloak falls, and then a white dove is like flying off into the distance. You really want Chirac to come and just... Fuck that dove. Yeah. But it doesn't happen. Tal and Amos, you know, T and A, <laughs> they battle their way to the top. Dar puts his hand on Kiri's face and he's like, smiling. Yeah. <laughs> he wakes her up. He picks her up and carries her. Mayax pulls the knife out and he stands up. Amos like screams out to the crowd, fight to the top. And Taco, you know, he doesn't have a lot to do with his time these days. <laughs> He's a bachelor now. <laughs> so he leads the charge. And all, right. all the townsfolk, they start fighting and killing guards and stuff. And they're, they're heading up the pyramid to help everybody. Dar starts carrying Kiri down the steps. And you can see Kodo and Poto like running up every step to meet him. It's pretty cute. Like, yay, Dildar, we love you, man. <laughs> bum, bum. And then Mayax is behind him with the knife. And then Kodo jumps on him and just chews into his neck. Nice. And he's like, ah, and he falls into the fire pit and boom, he explodes. <laughs> As he was falling, Kodo was like, make me into soup. <laughs> and Dar screams out, Kodo. Oh. Yeah. Kodo sacrificed himself to save Dar. Damn. And Poto is like, we're crying. <laughs> Shit, man. Kiri has to pull Dar away because he was like going to jump in the fire to go get his little buddy. <laughs> and he's like holding Poto. And the city has won. Okay. Everybody's cheering. Yeah, we did it. We did it. And Dar is just like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> My friend, he's dead. And then somebody's like, hey, um, look, look, look off in the distance. And Amos is like, Oh, shit, man, it's the Juns. <laughs> the barbarian <laughs> horde is coming. Oh, God. And it's a cloud of dust. Here they come, baby. People are like, we must fight. No, we must flee. Amos looks at Tal, and he's like, it's your decision now. And Tal, who is the new king, right? He just looks up at Dar. <laughs> like, what do I do? <laughs> and Dar just nods at him and goes, we will fight. And the whole crowd just goes wild. Like, yeah. <laughs> and then the, the camera stays on Dar and he kind of like rubs Poto on his lips. Like he nuzzles him. Yeah. It was such an odd shot, but uh, oddly realistic, I feel. Yeah. You know, he's a hero, but he's like still in his grief. Mm -hmm. So then the villagers, they all got to work together and Amos is like in charge. He's like, come on, pull the bridge. Pull the bridge back from shit moat. <laughs> pull, pull for your freedom. Everybody to the moat. And he yells at them to cover it, to kick dirt on it. <laughs> He's like, make it look like dry ground. And uh, it's like, okay, Amos, yeah. Yeah. Dar is sitting on the pyramid. He's like still pretty sad, but then he reaches into his, uh, you know, his underwear and pulls out the, the, the penis medallion. Uh -huh. And he looks at it and he's like, yeah. All right. Chirac shows up. 
and he throws the medallion to Chirac, and then Chirac catches it and flies away. So now it's night, and we can hear the Juns are very close. All right, it's taken them all day to get there. And the villagers, they're all ready. Okay, they're waiting. Dar and Amos are standing together. You know, the two, they're two badass motherfuckers. Mm-hmm. And then out of the dark, the horde arrives. <laughs> and they're pretty scary, okay? Uh, they're still the leader with the bat wings on his helmet, okay? When Kiri sees him, she's like, oh, shit. She remembers him. He, he was her first anal. <laughs> so the Johns just, like, stand there and stare at him. You know, they're all on horses. And then the leader raises his club, and they charge, baby. Every one of them right into the shit moat. <laughs> and they're like, oh, yay, it worked. <laughs> and they all struggle, but it turns out the shit moat is not that deep, so they don't die, okay? <laughs> um, and they all just start shooting arrows at, at all the good guys. Oh, God. Many villagers die, <laughs> including the gatekeeper who dies right over the switch to close the gate. Oh. So the gate slams shut, but not before Tal runs out to help everybody. And then Kiri has to go out to try to help Tal, and she ends up getting her little skimpy little dress caught in the gate. Like it almost cuts her in half, Ugh. but catches her dress instead. So the Juns see her, and they're like, All right! <laughs> Tal runs to help her and gets shot with an arrow right in his chest. Ugh. It's like, man, you stupid kid. Jesus. Dildar just climbs the gate and <laughs> jumps over the wall. So does Amos. They jump down. They start fighting. Kiri actually picks up a torch and lights one of these barbarians on fire. And then Dar just like jumps up and kicks him. And he flies right back into shit moat and then the whole thing boom just explodes and it is huge man Damn. you know the poop is a lot of gas <laughs> flammable yeah so they all start burning and it's like oh okay cool good plan guys <laughs> this was a huge pyrotechnic like it probably sucked filming this <laughs> Because, like, Mark Singer and everybody, they still got to, like, run around in the middle of all this smoke and shit. Yeah. It was very well done, I thought. So the Juns are burning, but then a lot of them are just, like, riding through the fire. Like, who cares? The leader comes through. He's staring at Dildar. And then Dar, like, whoop, 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 swings his sword like he's ready for him. Mm-hmm. Like, you killed my father, Reggie. Now, while that's going on, Amos and Kiri, they're fighting too, and they can both kick some ass. So all these Juns, they're dying left and right, but there's a lot of them. So they're all starting to surround them. Amos goes full-on berserker staff-twirling mode. (laughs) It's amazing. It's the male equivalent of how you were introduced to Grace Jones in Conan the Destroyer. (laughs) (laughs) They help Tar up, who's like still clinging to life. And uh, they get for real surrounded, like they've lost, okay, they're done. The leader, having singled Dar out, like pulls out his club, and then these blades, shing, out of the side of it, so it's a super club. All right, and he starts swinging it at Dildar, and he ends up knocking Dar's sword, Reg's sword, out of his hand. And he's like, all right, man, you just face it, Beastmaster, you're not cut out for this. He keeps swinging it at Dar. Dar keeps dodging all the swipes. He finally gets his sword back, and they start dueling on this burning bridge. Grrr, cling, clang, clang. Dar ends up cutting one of the bat wings off of his helmet. Like, yeah, that's right, bitch. <laughs> that pisses that leader off, man. <laughs> He's swinging his club at him even harder now. Dar is like rolling around trying to dodge all of this. He ends up throwing the leader down, but the guy gets up, and then Dar kicks him in the head and just throws him into the fire. <laughs> and all the Juns, all the rest of the Juns, they don't scatter when their leader dies. They keep fighting. <laughs> they they all close in on, on our group of heroes. Dar ends up going ass to ass with Amos, and uh, <laughs> Amos says to him, it almost worked. And Dildar's like, yep. <laughs> and it sucks. And then in swoops Sharak and lands on Dildar's arm. And it's like, all right. And then behind all of the Juns, all of those bat creatures just stand up. Fuck yeah. And man. then they open their wings. Whoosh, and all the Juns are like, 
oh shit and then <laughs> blah, 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 they all start enveloping them and like di- digesting them oh, you know and you know, killing them bones and goo are flying all over the place save the dicks <laughs> They're killing everybody as Dar just looks at Amos and he's like, um, you know, I've now, I've always been kind of uneasy around these guys, so let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, and he turns and then there's three of those bat creatures just standing there facing Dar. And then one of them just slowly nods at Dar like, yeah, that's right. We got your back. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Okay, I'm I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> Amos yells out, "Raise the gate!" And then they all go in. Everybody's cheering for them. They go into some hut and they lay Tal down. And uh, Dar and Tal, they're like holding hands. Amos just yanks the arrow out of Tal's chest. <laughs> I don't know if that was a good thing to do or not, but uh, it looked like it hurt. Before Tal passes out, he just says, "Beast, master." And just fades to black. The next day, Dar and Amos are talking. And Amos is like, yeah, Tal's going to be all right. Don't worry about it. (laughs) Then I shall be leaving. Oh, here, for the new king. And he gives Amos the caber, which was strangely absent from the final (laughs) fight. Amos, as he's taking it, he grabs Dildar's hand and looks at his mark. And he's like, what the hell? He looks at the mark of R, and then he looks up at the pyramid in the center of the city, and that's what the mark of R is. Mm. And he's like, whoa, it was you who was first born, and it is you who should be king. Nah, listen, man, you trained Tal well, and he will make a fine king. Besides, he already has the strongest right hand that any leader of men could want. He really said that in this movie. So take that from, you know, what you will. Take from that what you will. <laughs> He's also a teenage boy. You know? <laughs> He's obviously referring to Amos, but, you know. So he's going to leave. And then they are just two glistening barbarians <laughs> like holding each other's arms. He's like, yeah, buddy. So Dar leaves with Rue, who was also completely absent from the final fight. <laughs> Tal wakes up, and Amos is like, yeah, back from the dead. Look, he left this for you. It's called a caber. And then Tal just goes, he's gone. Like, yeah, no shit. I just just watched him leave. Dar's leaving, and Kiri actually chases him down, doesn't stop him, and just watches him go. We see Tal run into the top of the pyramid. At the top is Shirak, who's like, Tal opens the caber, and it's like, what are you going to do with that, son? (laughs) <laughs> Chirac is a good guy you know? And Chirac flies away And uh, Tal's like Yeah this is my weapon This is you know, this is going to be my symbol I'm going to build my kingdom around this dun, dun, dun. And it just shows Dar Standing on the peak of a mountain Triumphant And then Kiri sneaks up behind him He's like, huh? He turns around and they smile. And then they just start making out. Like really hardcore. Okay. Rue is also there. <laughs> okay. Um, have you thought this out? Uh, <laughs> Podo peeks up out of the purse with two tiny babies. Aww. Yeah. It turns out she was pregnant. And Podo's like, I never even knew I was a girl. <laughs> And she's peeking out of the purse, and Rue, like, gets real close to Poto, and Poto, like, licks his face. Wow. It is so cute. And then, whee! Shirak is, like, flying over all of them, flying over these kissing lovers. And we see them from far away at Shirak's point of view, but we hear, so, um, we're cousins? Yeah. Oh, that is so hot. <laughs> And then the credits roll, baby. All right. Yeah. This was a long time coming. I love this movie, man. Yeah. So there you go. That's the Beastmaster on Movies with Ron. Good job. Thanks, pal. Yeah, that's a great movie. It is, man. I love it. I've seen this like millions of times. I've never seen it before. I cannot believe that, man. (laughs) I've only ever seen the second one. Oh, the second one is such garbage. I know. I mean... Yeah, it's garbage. <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you make it through life without seeing the first Beastmaster? 
I don't know, but it's not something a kid should see. You're right. <laughs> Speaking of kids watching it, Don Coscarelli made this movie with no blood whatsoever on purpose so that kids could watch it. They could get the violence, but no gore. Yeah, and the tits. Oh, yeah, tits. <laughs> You know, these, this was a different time. <laughs> they went through like 20 ferrets filming this movie. Really? Well, no, they didn't go through them. <laughs> but every ferret, because ferrets are like really hard to train. Yeah. If you can get one trained to do something, you use that ferret for that shot only. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Like the ferret that licked the tiger's face. Yeah was the only ferret that would do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Every other ferret fears black tigers. <laughs> At the end, uh, the the co-writer who wrote this with Don Coscarelli, I think his name was Paul Pepperman, he ended up like, keeping a couple of the, the ferrets, you know, because he likes a house that smells like shit and piss. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. If you're using that Apple Podcasts or iTunes... We'd love it if you'd leave us a rating and review. And don't forget, we're going to take a little break, a few weeks. In the meantime, we've got an excellent back catalog on all your other favorite podcast apps and movieswithron.com. Find us on Twitter, at Movies with Ron. There's a Facebook page. Check us out. It's been fun. Yep, we love you. Beauty and the Beast. Master. 